Well, Eastview family, it is so good to be with you. And what I believe is a God-sized movement in our midst and with us and through us and in spite of us, I believe he's called us to love McLean County as never before. And I'm just excited uh, to be uh, here with you in this place. Blessed to have so many of you here. We continue to grow as people keep uh, coming back from COVID and all that stuff. And God continues to expand who we're able to reach. I want to welcome today uh, Shanoa First Baptist Church, and you're partnering with us on this study. And we just pray that God will bless you in a special way. Amen. Yeah. Excited about that. Pastor Jeff and Maxine and our sister Kim up there. We shout out to Hersher Congregation and, and Terry Anna and Jim and all you guys doing all the work. Some, some fans of Hersher, yeah. And uh, of course, our family, Eastview Bloomington, we love you. You're awesome. Shout out to Greg and Kelly and Kate and Bob and all of you guys there. We're blessed that God's doing this incredible thing. I want to say hi to Kevin in Florida and Rebecca in Idaho and the Steele family in North Carolina watching online, everybody watching online. Listen, I, I want to uh, give a special shout out today to Linda Fall. She's one of the original members of Eastview, and she's had a lot of health stuff. So she's, she's a home watching. I know Linda, as she's been giving and, and serving and loving in Jesus' name for 67 years here at Eastview Christian Church. So God bless you, Linda. We love you. Praying for you to get better. And I want to give a shout out to uh, Harry Hoyt's family. He passed away on Friday night at the age of 101 years old. He's a longtime member of Eastview Christian Church. He could tell stories, trust me. Uh, but we're blessed by him and his family and his legacy. And uh, I just want to say one last time, it's not too late to join. Okay, it's not too late to start what we're getting ready to do. Grab a booklet. They're very simple. You're like, I could have written this. Of course, that's, we want it to be simple. And we want it to be something you can walk through every day and be a part of the devotions every day and be here every Sunday. Guys, we're taking this very seriously. We hope that you'll join with us. Uh, if you want to join a small group today at four o'clock, you can come back here and you can meet some of the people that I promise will be some of your lifelong friends as you journey in faith together. And so you can get a small group this afternoon if you want to at four o'clock, just come back here. Well, since we're all here, uh, let's go all in. You guys ready to go all in today? Let's go all in. That's the name of our study for the next five weeks, and it's kind of got a double uh, a meaning, a double entendre, if you will. English scholars. It, it's, it's all in because it means all of the people of God, all of us everywhere, we're all going to do this together. But it's also all in because we're going all the way. We're going to give it everything we got. And that's not very easy in this ish culture that we live in. I mean, there's words like ish, or this, uh, it's the end of a word like ish, and words like sorta, and words like kinda, that kind of describe who we are sometimes. And so if you say to someone, you know, uh, are, are you a coffee person? They go, kinda. Uh, do you like country music? Ish. I'm an all out person for that, but that's another story. Do you like country music? Ish. Are you a Bears fan? Sort of. We'll see how the first four weeks go. But there are some things in life you can't be ish, you can't be sort of, you can't be kind of, you gotta be all in. Are you married? Sort of. <laughs> no! You gotta be all the way in. Are you dating this person? You guys dating? Kind of. No, you're not dating if you're not kind of, you're all the way in. You can't be kind of or ish dating or being in business with someone. It has to be all the way. And that brings us to Acts chapter one, and we're going to start this all-in journey. Guys, if there's one relationship in this world that we have to be all the way, 100% in, it is the following of Jesus Christ. There's nothing that, uh, like being all-in for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ cannot be kind of Lord to you. He cannot be sort of the Savior. He cannot be maybe-ish God. He is who he says he is. We believe it, and we're all the way in. And so the next five weeks, we want to inspire one another, be all in this mission to love McLean County, every town, every place, every one. So let's go all in, all of us, all the way. And we're going to begin with Acts chapter 1, verse 8. I'm going to read some verses around it because I want you to have context. But the verse that we want to focus on today and most of this week is Acts 1, 8. So here is the word of the Lord. If you are new here, we open the Bible every week and we let the word of God speak to us. And uh, that's the supernatural power. I'll probably say some dumb things or get tongue-tied here in a moment, and we'll all laugh at me. But this is the word of the Lord, Acts chapter 1, verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? 
And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but, and here's verse eight, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood, uh, came and stood by them in white robes and said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the heaven? This Jesus who is taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Let's pray and ask the Lord to speak to us today. God, by the power of your spirit who lives in us, by the power of your word, the living word, Jesus, who rose from the dead, and the written word, the Bible, that tells us of the beautiful story of good news through Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, that you would come in power now. I don't want to entertain. I don't want to be articulate. I just want the power of the Holy Spirit to emanate now. In this place, through these cameras, to whoever is watching, wherever they're at, God, I pray that you would move in great power now. I pray that you would just ignite our hearts for going all in this great mission that you gave us in Acts chapter one. I pray that you help me to speak it well, Lord, for your glory, for your kingdom. I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Well, in most of these verses that we're going to study together, you're going to see these all-in kind of uh, phrases. And in chapter 1, verse 8 of Acts, the all-in is in all Judea. I want you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. It's an all-in proposition. Now, I want, want to give you the context here. Um, Luke is the writer. Remember, Luke writes the Gospel of Luke as a historian, and he writes the Gospel of Acts as a historian. He didn't see a lot of this stuff, but he asked other people about it. And at the end of Luke, he, he ends with the resurrection and Jesus' ascension. And at the beginning of Acts, he, he ends with Jesus' resurrection and his ascension. We stand with these apostles and these followers of Jesus Christ. 2,000 years later, we're still between resurrection and return. That's where we're at right now. We, we stand behind, we, we, between Jesus saying, I'm back, and Jesus saying, I'm coming back. And that's where we find ourselves, in between the resurrection. These guys had just experienced this most amazing thing. Look in verse 3, Acts 1. We didn't read it. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs. There is no doubt in anybody's mind who's hearing these words right now that Jesus was dead and now he's alive. And then they had this incredible thing where Jesus is taken up into the heaven in the clouds. And they're standing there going, golly, do you see? I mean, I they're overwhelmed. They're, they're Hicks from Galilee. What? You, see, you ever see anything like that? No. And the, and the angels had to come and say, hey, the movie's over. Go home. But we, we, he's going to come back the same way. But in between his resurrection and in between his return, I've got something for you to do. And here we are 2,000 years later, and the mission has not stopped. Love McLean County all in for loving McLean County is what God's calling us to in between resurrection and his return. And I believe that we're perfectly equipped. I want to tell you something. This is not something to be afraid of. You and I, followers of Jesus Christ, we are perfectly equipped to reach all of McLean County by loving and serving them in Jesus' name. I hope you believe it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to convince you through the word of God, okay? So uh, we're perfectly equipped to do this because of this reason. We'll start here. We have all received the Holy Spirit power. We've all received Holy Spirit power. Holy Spirit power is integral to this mission. You can't do it on your own. In fact, Jesus tells these people, don't, he, these are the followers. These are his trainees. They've been with him for three years. He's saying, listen, I know you guys know some stuff. You can do some miracles. You can cast out demons. You've seen the resurrection. Do not mess up my kingdom. You stay in Jerusalem until you receive power. Don't do this in your own power. This is not your own wisdom, your own strength, your own ability to, to articulate what I'm all about. If you try to do the kingdom work in human power, you'll mess the whole thing up. There's a message for us. That's not the sermon, but that's a good one. If we're going to win this, this county for Jesus Christ or wherever we live for Jesus Christ, we can't do it in our own power. It's going to take supernatural God power. Luke 24, 48 and following, at the end of the uh, Gospel of Luke, as I said, he says, you are witnesses of these things, and I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. 
And here in chapter 1, verse 4, we didn't read it, but he says, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, the, the Holy Spirit. He's just like, listen, guys, one thing, do not leave Jerusalem. You're going to need what I'm sending. You cannot do this thing that I'm calling you to without the power of the Holy Spirit. And this promised power, as you guys know the story, if you've been around very long, if you don't, let me tell you in Acts chapter 2, on the first day of Pentecost, the first day of the church, the Holy Spirit falls in power. They're speaking in languages that 13 different nationalities can understand all at once. There's an earthquake. The whole city comes together and the beginning of the church, and it starts by the power of the Holy Spirit. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. was predicted and was a part of the first Christian sermon. Here's what Joel said hundreds of years before it happened. In the last days, it shall be that God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Even on my male and female servants in those last days, I will pour out my spirit, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Guys, listen. There's some people that need saving. There's some people that need the gospel. They need the truth of Jesus' love in their, in their lives. And it will only happen. Joel connects the Holy Spirit's power with calling on the name of the Lord and being saved. And I just want to I encourage you today. Here's, do you believe this? We all receive, we have all received the Holy Spirit's power. Even though it's 2,000 years later, we're still living between resurrection and return. And we can't do anything without the Holy Spirit. If we're going to go all in, we got to go all in with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit's all in us, in all of us. And it will not be by our might. Guys, we've, we've worked so hard as a staff and volunteers, you know, T-shirt designs and stuff on the walls and, and brochures and little booklets and all kinds of stuff uh, on, online that you can get access to. And here's the deal. That's not going to win McLean County. It's not our plans it's not our efforts. We don't have special sauce. <laughs> it's not our power. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that will win souls for Jesus Christ. That's it. Acts 2.38 says that those who repented and ba were baptized on the first day of the church, they were forgiven in Jesus. They were baptized in Jesus' name, forgiven, and they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. That means you. Yes, you. Yes, you. I see you sitting on the couch right now. Whoever you are, if you're a follower of God through Jesus Christ, you have been given the promise of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us, and that reality changes everything. I know many of us may be skeptical or even apathetic or maybe a little bit afraid of your role in Love McLean County. You think this is just another uh, a sermon fall kickoff and another movement, and we're just going to be done with this by October. But I'm telling you that the Holy Spirit wants us to do so much more. Sometimes doubts creep in about faith sharing. Many of you could say that I don't know what to say. I don't, I don't know how to witness to people because I don't know what to say. Some of you are like, my non-Christian friends, you don't know them, Mike. They're never going to come to faith in Jesus Christ. They're too far gone. Some of you are saying, I'm embarrassed to align myself with Jesus and his church and this culture that has bad-mouthed us and told a lot of lies about us. Some of you say, they're going to ask questions that I can't answer some of you is like, I, I just don't know if I can do it, if I can love McLean County, if I can go through all these steps. Guys, listen, I just want to take the pressure off you. Deep breath. <sighs> it's not about you. It's about the Holy Spirit. It's about us yielding to this power of God who lives inside of us. According to Jesus, the Holy Spirit guides us and comforts us and prays for us and opens doors for us and gives us words to say when we don't know what to say. The Holy Spirit is the living God in us. He's gifted us. He empowers us. His power resides where we are. The spiritual breath of God is the power that will change McLean County through us. I just want to encourage you. You're sitting there going, hey, when do you get to the evangelism part? I will, just a minute. I just want to tell you what's going on with the Holy Spirit. Here's what it says in the book of Romans. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Guys, the Holy Spirit of God is real. I said it this week to the, the elders when we were praying. Turns out the Holy Spirit's the thing. We don't talk about him enough perhaps, but we need to. 
because he is the real presence of God that motivates and moves and empowers what we do. Do you believe, disciples, do you believe that the Holy Spirit of God lives in you? If he does, then loving McLean County is not just possible, it's probable because he's that powerful. Today, as we identify our locations, Let's don't focus on the, the questions and the concerns and the fears that a lot of us have. Here we are after resurrection, these crazy disciples, just like me and you, are asking the wrong question. Verse 6 and 7, hey, Jesus, now that you're back from the dead, are you going to restore Israel now? And you know what he says to them? Hey, guys, focus. The times and the seasons are my father's plan. He's got a design. He's got a plan. Here's what you don't need to know the plan you don't need to understand what's going on. You don't need to know the details or the timing of what God's doing. What you need is power. Spirit first, and then we go to the next part, the, the thing that we're equipped with. We all have received the Holy Spirit. We are all witnesses. You see that, that encouragement there in Acts chapter 1, verse 8? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, power, and you will be my witnesses. You'll be the ones that testify to who I am. Now this word, if you've been around Eastview for very long, in fact, we, we actually prayed through and, and read through the Bible and sought um, you know, counsel on what this vision statement of Eastview was gonna be uh, in 2012 with the elders. And, uh, and this is very important, this word witness is very important to us because it's a part, a major part of our vision statement. If you've been around, Here's what we hope to be. This is what we saw in the early church in the Bible, and this is what we want to be in 2050, Lord willing. We want to be a fearless church of Christ followers whose ridiculous love, look, and dangerous witness are irresistible. Dangerous witness. Where'd we get that? When some people hear that, they're like, dangerous witness? I mean, what, is it dangerous to go to your church? I hope so. The Greek word is martureo. Martus here is the plural. He's saying, you guys will be my martus. You're going to be my martureos. That means to give testimony. It's a courtroom word from the first century. That means you tell your side of the story. But it's a dangerous witness because in the first church, all the way through these centuries, even to this day, when you testify about Jesus Christ, sometimes people want to kill you. And they did. And that martureo becomes the word martyr, which means you have given your life for your testimony about Jesus Christ. Now, we don't live in a country yet where you're getting killed for your testimony about Jesus Christ, but we think it's risky sometimes. We think it's dangerous sometimes to align ourselves with Jesus and his church, especially in this culture. So here's the question. Why wouldn't we or why wouldn't these guys just keep their mouths shut? Why witness? Why is Jesus asking them to put their lives on the line by witnessing that Jesus Christ is who he says he is? It's because of this one word. The word is resurrection. Resurrection separates Jesus and his teaching and every world religion and the promise and hope that we have in Jesus Christ from every other teaching and thought system there is. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. When Jesus says, you will be my witnesses, it includes his life, his teachings, his ways for sure. But there's this one thing that separates Jesus from everything else. Your testimony, you're going to give witness about the resurrected Lord. He's alive. That's the message of the early church. Again, imagine this, this going, guys, you understand something. We, we would be quiet. We would go to have our little religious gatherings. We'd have, you know, cookies and, and coffee, and we'd hold hands and sing kumbaya and pray together. It'd just be really, really off, off to the side in Jerusalem. But here's the deal. Jesus came back from the dead. He was dead, and now he's alive. That's pretty interesting. It's at least we're talking about. We saw it with our own eyes. So in Acts chapter 2, verse 32, the first sermon of the church, Peter says, this Jesus God raised up, and of that we are witnesses. The first time they were persecuted and threatened, to, if, if they weren't, wouldn't quiet down about Jesus Christ, they'd be thrown in jail or beaten or worse. In Acts 4.10, they said, we, we got to keep talking. This man was healed by the name of Jesus Christ, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. They took this witness thing to heart. In these days, and, and I, I've said that, that Jesus gives them this mission after his resurrection, 
and his ascension, and he says, go to Jerusalem and hang out there until you receive the Holy Spirit. Well, they were there for probably anywhere from eight to 10 days, praying for the Holy Spirit, praying for God to move, waiting. But in the meantime, they said, listen, we gotta get this, we gotta get this witness thing right. And so in the end of chapter one of Acts, verse 22, um, they, they get up to replace Judas, and they're like, what are the requirements for replacing an apostle? This is a big deal. Judas is gone. Unfortunately, Judas didn't see the resurrection. But beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. When you started interviewing potential apostles uh, and you put it out there on the internet and people started filling out resumes, one of the things they had to do, you have to have been with us the entire time Jesus was here on the earth from his baptism until his resurrection. We need people who can stand next to us and say, yep, we saw him dead, and we saw him alive. And if you're visiting today, maybe you're watching online, maybe you're into Jesus-ish, maybe you're into church kind of, maybe you're sort of interested, or maybe you're not interested at all. If you ask me today, why should I follow Jesus Christ? I would say this one word, resurrection. Yes, he died and he buried, he paid for my sins, he is my Lord, is my Savior, but here's the thing that separates him from every other teaching in the world. He is coming back for us and we will be resurrected like him. And I'm a witness to the resurrection. And if there's a God who brings dead things to life, if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, this is good news for you because God can take your dead life and he can bring it back alive. I'm witness to the resurrection. You know, wait, time out, pastor. You were born in 1965. <laughs> you never witnessed the resurrected Jesus, or Jesus for that matter. You never saw him alive, let alone then dead and then alive again. How can you be a witness to what you didn't see? Well, let me tell you how I can be a witness to the resurrection. Number one, there's enough overwhelming historic evidence that Jesus lived and died and was buried and rose again for me to believe it. My witness comes out of the eyewitnesses who gave their lives for what they knew to be true. There's no way, it's silly to go, nah, that whole thing was a farce. Okay, we're gonna kill you. Okay, I'm just kidding, that wasn't, he didn't rise. That's how we would bail out. But if Jesus actually had risen from the dead, something happened around 30 to 33 AD that changed the world and changed these scaredy cat disciples into bold preachers for Jesus. And you know what it was? They saw him alive. And I take that testimony and my testimony is built on that. But here's the deal. I've said this before. I can give witness to the resurrection because the resurrected Jesus is still resurrecting lives today. He's doing it in us. I have seen dead marriages brought to life. I've seen dead, soulless people who have no purpose, no meaning, no desire to live brought to joy and peace and, and happiness in the kingdom of God. I can testify to people buried in racism becoming living, loving people who love everyone. I've seen hundreds of people walk out of the graves of sexual and alcoholic and drug addictions to new life. I can bear witness to people dead in sin who live for God now. Guys, the, the resurrected king, when we sing around here, has resurrected me, and he is resurrecting us. At one point, these early witnesses simply said about their faith in Jesus Christ. Acts 4.20, we, <laughs> we cannot help but speak about what we've seen and heard. Hey, you guys, quiet down, you Christians, in the 21st century. We don't wanna hear about it. We don't wanna hear about all the stuff that you think that we need to do. We want you to be quiet and go about your business. In fact, we don't like you very much. And I, you would say, well, Mike, yeah, I kinda of get that. Why would we talk? Here's why, we cannot help but speak about what we have seen and heard. Can I get a witness? Hey, amen. I know you're amen and over at Bloomington right now. I love y'all, I can hear you. Seven miles down the road, but I can hear y'all. We cannot help but speak about what we have seen and heard. Even the day we're gonna picture some lives buried in baptism, we've had this incredible wave, I believe because of the prayers of the people of God, a wave of people giving their lives to Jesus Christ by faith and being baptized. Uh, I think it will be close to 40, I'm a preacher, so don't take this count literally, 40-ish plus baptisms this month. 
alone. And we're seeing it all the time, every day, and we'll see some more today. And it's a picture of dying to your sin and to yourself and being raised into a newness of life, to a walk in newness with Jesus Christ. Guys, I'm witness to the resurrection because the resurrected Jesus has resurrected me and many of you. And I believe that God can resurrect this community. And I, can, I believe he can resurrect our schools and our businesses. I believe he can resurrect you if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ today, he can bring your life to really living. And that's what we're hoping to do, that God will do through this whole all-in movement of ours. So we gotta have the Holy Spirit power, and we all do. We have to have a, a word, a testimony to give, a witness, and we do, because it's resurrection. And that leads to this final part that Jesus talks about. We are all where we need to be. But it's so simple. You could write this sermon. It's just Acts 1.8. Wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. We've all received the power of the Holy Spirit. You will be my witnesses. We all have something to say, something we've seen and heard, Jesus resurrecting our lives. And just, just do it where you're at. <laughs> we are all where we need to be. The, as they say in real estate, right? Location, location, location. And it's interesting to me that Jesus, in one of his most incredible moments with his disciples, he just mentions these towns by name. In, in the kingdom of God, with the power of the Holy Spirit as witnesses to a new life, we simply need to begin with where we are and expand from there. Acts 1a, he starts with Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the world. So wait, let's get this map out. Let's see what Jesus was talking about. This is a map of, of the the uh, Palestine in the time of Jesus Christ, right? And here's where they were. They were in Jerusalem. In, in fact, they were on this little mountain to the side of Jerusalem when he said, I want you to be my witnesses. They're in Jerusalem. He says, we're like, okay, we're ready to go. What do you want us to do? Go to Jerusalem. Okay. What do we want us to do? Just wait. We're going to start in Jerusalem. By the way, on the day of Pentecost, some of you guys know this because your Bible scholars way smarter than me, but I'll tell you this. On the day of Pentecost, they were coming for this Jewish festival and people from all over the world. In Acts chapter uh, two, it says there were people in 13 different languages and nationalities from all over the known world came to Jerusalem to worship and that's where he started his church. It was a multi-racial, multi-segregated uh, community from the very beginning of the church. That's what he's doing. And it starts in Jerusalem. And then he simply says, listen, we start in Jerusalem and then Judea, and then Samaria, and then the ends of the world, even over to Indianapolis. Some people look at this Acts 1-8 as kind of an index to the whole book of Acts. Because if you look at Acts 1-8, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth, uh, the first seven chapters of Acts or so are around Jerusalem, around Judea, and the area that's close to Jerusalem. And then by uh, Acts chapter 8, we find this guy named Philip, who's evangelizing towns in Samaria, and Samaritans are coming to faith in Jesus Christ. And by the time we get to the end of the book, we find the Apostle Paul in their, under house arrest in Rome, the center of the universe back then, and he's sending people all over the world to spread the news. In approximately 32 years, the gospel of Jesus Christ grew from this little group of people, 120 people in Jerusalem, to worldwide influence. And I believe the idea of beginning where you are and expanding from there is still the way for us to reach McLean County. We just, need to take, we just need to take territory in Jesus' name. I hope you noticed on our walls in the atrium, our graphic arts team designed a couple of maps. We've changed our look out there in the atrium. If you've been used to it for 10 years, it's different now. Because we wanted to have a visual for the place we're trying to reach in Jesus' name. So we have a picture, we have a map of Bloomington Normal and of McLean County. And this is McLean County. And uh, that's the one you'll see out there on the wall. But if Jesus were to come back today, and, and he were giving us this mission today, he would say, hey, I want you to start in Bloomington, and then Normal, and then Leroy, and then the ends of the world. Shout out to Leroy, my favorite town in McLean County. 
Guys, listen, I believe that Jesus is simply saying that he's not asking. Many of you have been on mission trips, and that's great for your faith. It stretches you in ways that are amazing. Some of you have been to other towns and other places, and you've done service projects, and that's amazing. But Jesus is saying to us today, start where you are. Love McLean County begins with the places you already are. That's why we're going to encourage you all through this thing, but especially today, you have those little booklets. I want you to take time and identify the three places that are your places of witness. I, again, I know you're sitting there going, Pastor, I don't want to do Please, just do it. Just go through the, the routine of writing down three places that you know you are all the time. Maybe it's your school. Maybe it's your town. Maybe it's your gym or your dorm room or the business you work in, the cubicle you work in. Maybe it's the cafeteria, the gym, the place you shop all the time, the people you buy coffee from all the time, the street you live on. Everyone here has a Jerusalem. Everyone here has a place or places where we go all the time. If you're in Shanoa watching today, Shanoa is your Jerusalem. If you're in Hersher, Hersher is your Jerusalem. Metamora, Metamora is your Jerusalem. Wherever you're at, that's the question for us today. Where you are is a place where God's kingdom can spread just like it did at the beginning of the church in Jerusalem. Now, I've added my, my conversation and my mocking uh, for 26 years to living in central Illinois. We kind of make fun of it. If you're not from central Illinois, it's just kind of, it's our fun thing to say, what a terrible place to visit, but we live here, right? And that's, that's where we are. We've raised our kids here, and, uh, and most of us are like, I can't wait to get out of central Illinois, or broader yet, I can't wait to get out of Illinois. Did it ever occur to you, maybe it hasn't occurred to me, have we ever considered that being who we are, where we are, is God's plan for salvation in that place? Maybe you're called to central Illinois. Maybe you're called to Bloomington Normal. Maybe you're called to Leroy or Shanoa or Hayworth or any number of places. Maybe you're called to that coffee shop. Maybe you're called to be at that job. Maybe you're called to be in that classroom. Have you ever considered that God has a plan? He told these guys, I'm not gonna tell you the timing or the way of this plan. All I'm telling you is, Holy Spirit's gonna be on, your, on you in power. You're gonna have a testimony and just start where you are. What if thousands of spirit-filled Christ followers went all in to where they were? Not just kind of ish there, not kind of sort of there, not kind of there, but all in to the places where God has placed us and called us, where we live and where we, uh, where we serve and where we shop. What if we just adopt those places and we say, God, help us love and serve in your name here? That's what Love McLean County is all about. So to, later, guys, don't get ahead. Okay, this is like, I always got in trouble when I was in school and they say, just you know, answer the first question and then put your pens down. I'd answer the whole test and then I'd, I'd flunk, right? I didn't flunk, but uh, you guys are going, wow, why are you reviewing your school with us? There's an illustration in there somewhere and I lost it, but it'll come back to me in just a minute. <laughs> oh, don't get ahead, yeah. Don't get ahead in your books because we're going to come to a place with our small groups where we all consider a place that we can adopt as a small group that's in McLean County. Don't rush there. Today, just make it personal. Where are you? Three places. Write them down. You can share them with your small group this week. That's part of the design. This is where all in begins. It begins in our Jerusalem, in our Judea, in our Samaria. The first people who were called to be all in reacted in a way that I pray many of us do not react today when it comes to witness. We read this earlier. After Jesus had spoken these words, guys, I'm going to send my power. You're going to have a testimony. Just start where you are and watch the kingdom of God expand. The Bible says that they stood <laughs> gazing into heaven as he went. And I think that's the way it is sometimes as Christians in our culture. We're just standing around, hoping for Jesus to come back, 
not really knowing that we're on mission, not really knowing he's calling us to something, not really knowing that that neighbor or that coworker or that person we work out with, they really are people he wants us to share our faith with by loving and serving them. And we're like these disciples just going, when's he coming back? I believe the words of the angels are for us today. Why are you standing here? Why are you standing here? You got work to do. Go to your place, go to your Jerusalem, pray and get ready for God to do an incredible movement through all in, through loving McLean County. We've called this an all church move because we're not gonna stand still anymore. We've been stuck maybe for two and a half years through this whole COVID thing. We're not stuck anymore. We're done staring and waiting for Jesus to come back. We are on mission. What are you waiting for? Go to your place, pray, and get ready. Amen.